嗰陣時啱啱有個機會屋宇建設委員咧就招聘誒職師，咁我就去申請啦。咁好好幸好幸運，我就佢收到我。咁我入咗嚟，我知道頭一一個項目咧就係做碼頭圍村。哦。就一個二千個單位嘅公共房屋，我三十歲仔，咁佢話好有有挑戰性。同埋好有意義嘅嘅工作啦，咁我就又又第一步我就入咗嚟，好開心啊！對大部分人嚟講，衣食住行都係好重要嘅事，尤其是係住。公營房屋發展咗超過半個世紀。房委会都成立咗五十年啦，超过三成嘅家庭都系住喺公屋里面。香港一个咁细嘅地方，要令到每个人都能够安居，真系谈何容易Over the past century, Hong Kong has transformed from a small fishing village into an international city with a population of more than seven million people. Hong Kong is a small city with a large population, and together with the constant influx of settlers, there's a tremendous pressure on housing. With Japan's unconditional surrender, after the end of the Second World War, a large number of residents who had fled Hong Kong returned. Political changes also caused a massive inflow of people from the mainland. This led to a drastic growth in Hong Kong's population. In 1947, Hong Kong's post-war population jumped from 600,000 to 1.8 million. By 1950, the population almost reached 2.1 million. The shortage of housing led to the emergence of a large number of squatter settlements. These poorly built houses were overcrowded and unhygienic. Fire incidents occurred all the time. On Christmas night, December 1953, a fire broke out in the Shek Kip Mei squatter settlement, destroying all the shanty houses in the Shek Kip Mei village. Upper and Lower Pak Tin village, Upper and Lower Wo Chai village, and Tai Po Road village. The fire in Shek Kip Mei destroyed more than 4,000 houses and left more than 50,000 people homeless. The chief architect of the Works Bureau at the time, Mr. Alec Michael John Wright, said, The first priority was to give immediate help to those who had lost everything. This was followed by the planning and construction of new buildings so that they could be rehoused. 大火就喺十二月廿五號啦。四日之後，港督會同行政局咧就決定咗，除咗為咗要改善木屋誒區、寮屋區嘅環境之外咧，就係第一次決定，就係用政府嘅公帑嚟到為香港市民嚟到係起屋嘅。睇翻當時政府嗰啲討論咧，好清楚講有一點咧，就係話如果救濟嗰啲災民，其實。每兩星期所需要嘅費用咧，以當時嘅物價嚟講咧，誒起一啲臨時嘅一啲誒安置所俾佢哋，覺得好嘥啊 ！In the end, the Emergency Subcommittee on Resettlement decided to set up a temporary resettlement department to follow up on all matters relating to the prevention of unauthorized building works, the clearance and resettlement of shanty towns. The subcommittee further recommended. That multi-story buildings should be built for the resettlement, and they should be built with taxpayers' money. But in the seven towns that were built before, there was a period of time when the Housing Minister came out with some very simple buildings to be built for temporary resettlement. This is what we call the Bao Ling Building. Bao Ling Building is a name It's a two-level building, it's a two-level building, it's about 17 buildings. The building is a four-level building, it's a four-level building. It's a four-level building. 
煮飯咧，就要喺空地嗰度中間嘅地方嚟做煮食咁樣。咁屋頂咧就係用啲細棉瓦啦，即係嗰啲誒瓦通咁樣嗰啲咁嘅，咁係最簡單嘅，咁嚟嚟做啦。咁其實當時是到到二月啦，其實好快脆，已經有第一批落成噶啦。嗱，當然百零平方即係啊兩層啦，其實係咁亦都會好佔嘅地方好多啦，咁政府好快又覺得唔化算。嗰時咧，開始起呢個八零平房嘅時候咧，建築師喺度籌劃緊一啲係叫做多層大廈嘅實驗，因為橫掂起得兩層、三層啦，不如起高啲。其實係大火之後半個月到咧，二月初咧就已經有曬成套積㗎啦，就係依個嘅就係我哋而家好熟悉嘅誒誒嗰啲細字大廈一型嚟嘅。The first of eight six-story resettlement blocks was completed in Shekhip May by the end of 1954, which marked the beginning of public housing in Hong Kong. In 1954, the resettlement department was established to manage the multi-storey resettlement areas, developed as a result of the Shek Kip May fire in 1953. Between 1954 and 1975, a total of 25 resettlement areas were developed. There were seven types of buildings, the first two types of which were only seven storeys high, and were commonly known as the seven-storey blocks. 喺山坡下邊咧，咁我我哋而家見到啊，有石硤尾村啦，咁呢啲係比較近期嘅。十幾年前，咁其實都仲有好多啲舊式或者我哋叫一型嘅曬字區嘅。如果我哋睇翻一啲港督佢嘅報告都有提過，其實五十年代嘅香港政府佢冇辦法啊斷定呢新嚟港嘅移民或者難民，其實佢會唔會喺香港生活咧？咁啊，所以當時最早設計嗰啲沙子嘅房咧，第一就好細，一百二十尺；第二咧就佢冇考慮家庭嘅需要嘅，因為佢諗住可能會好快就搬走啊嘛，嗰啲人。嗰個沙子樓下一型咧，就其實就亦都係好似個八零平房咁樣啦，就其實背靠背靠背嘅嗰啲單位係，佢通常可能公字型噶嘛，就一層咧就六十四個單位。咁然後就係用呢個走廊咧，就圍住嚟入屋嘅。咁喺中間嗰個位咧，就係其實所有啲公用設施啦，就係譬如男女廁所各有三格，有個叫洗澡間。但要記住，我嗰陣時啲洗澡間其實冇水喎，成層樓咧就得兩個水喉嘅啫。咁咧就係喺個個叫做洗澡間啦嚇咁樣。咁你就即係話煮飯、洗衫、誒沖涼，你都喺嗰度攞水嘅咁樣。間間房都一樣大嘅嚇，嗰陣時就係一百二十尺啦，即係等於而家第十一誒平米到啦嚇。咁咧就總之每間房咧都住五個人。咁你可以諗啊，其實好多時啲家庭都唔係一定係五個人噶嘛，可能有多，可能有少。咁所以如果你係多個嘅，咁你可能咧剩翻嗰啲誒，即係家庭成員啦，可能就要同第二户一齊住啦咁樣咯。咁所以咧就總言之就每間房咧就係五個人咁樣嘅。咁嗰陣時就要盡快嘅方法嚟到去安置啲人咯。睇翻我哋喺一九五三年或者五幾年嗰個年代咧，就有好多人住喺啲寮屋啦。咁跟住好啦，我哋起咗啲大廈俾佢住咯。咁地下嗰層咧就係零售設施嚟嘅，有啲鋪頭嘅。天台咧就係學校嚟嘅。咁小朋友就喺天台嗰度咧就翻學。而喺樓與樓中間嘅地方咧，就係佢哋休憩地方、遊樂場嚟噶啦。當時嘅仲有另一樣嘢，就係解決市民衣食住行嘅時候咧，興建一啲工廠咧，就可以為當地嘅市民咧提供一啲就業機會啦。當時有好多所謂山寨廠啦，如果有一啲工廠咧，佢哋都可以遷入去嗰啲廠下嗰度咧，就可以提供一個工作嘅地方啦。咁所以咧，其實嗰陣時可以話成個社區都好一個混合發展嘅。
即係包括埋工作啦、居住啦、教育啦，全部都可以喺一個好近距離嘅地方咧，都可以全部咧係落成嘅。The Housing Authority Industrial Estates were also a part of public housing in Hong Kong during this time. The Hong Kong government started to develop resettlement areas in 1954. In order to attract small-scale businesses of various trades, commonly known as cottage industries, which were affected by the clearance of shanty towns, the resettlement department, later renamed as the Housing Authority, started to develop industrial estates. In Hong 就將那些山寨廠遷去曬至大廈形式的一些工廠大廈,就這樣來了,所以它的管理呢,它又是由曬至事務處管理的。The first industrial estate was the Changsha Wan estate, which was completed in 1957. Later, the resettlement department constructed more of these factory buildings in Taiwan, Kowloon and New Territories West. The design of the early estates was similar to that of these seven-storey blocks, which were in a H or I shape. The buildings varied from five to seven storeys high, with no lifts nor separate toilets. Then中間那裡就不是公共廁所浴室,就是一個斜道,你可以推貨,方便一點的。工作人員的兩邊就可以拍車,這樣的。所以其實這個也是我們解決了除了住屋問題,當時時期就業也是一個很重要的問題。我
，就係俾一啲即係可能係收入唔多嘅三百蚊啦，當時時三百蚊嘅人嚟嚟申請嘅。咁所以咧就其實喺度度。嗰啲嘅誒曬字大廈第六型咧，咁咧就係可以咧，就係係其實佢嗰個就係愛嚟做，有部分咧愛嚟做咗呢個嘅政府廉租屋嘅。廉租屋咧一個好大嘅唔同嘅地方咧，就係曬字區咧係純係為因為天災多數置火警啦，或者後來有颱風啦。同埋有啲市區嘅舊樓變成危樓，或者政府要誒發展一個地方，要收地，咁咧政府就會俾佢哋上樓，就唔係話俾居民一般嘅居民申請嘅，根本就冇得申請去住曬市區嘅。咁啊，政府喺六二年咧就提出廉租屋計劃啦，市民大眾一般就可以申請嘅。咁但係咧其實因為佢數量好少啊，所以其實係非常之難嘅。另外咧，廉租屋其實咧，大約十五個 percent 度留翻俾一啲基層公務員去申請噶。In April 1954, the partially independent Hong Kong Housing Authority was set up. It was one of the first public housing organisations of the Hong Kong government. Its aim was to provide a higher standard of housing at lower rents for those of a lower-paid white-collar income. 其實依個嘅廉租屋咧，咁嗰陣時喺一九五一年嘅時候咧，嗰陣時嘅英英國嘅誒內閣大臣咧，其實嗰陣時就佢哋都意識到香港嗰個房屋問題係好嚴重啦。咁所以嗰陣時咧就要求政府咧，誒你應該要要設立一啲部門啊，或者係一個專責組啊咁樣嚟睇睇點樣改善呢個香港嘅房屋咁樣樣嘅。喺一九五四年咧，成立咗依個嘅屋宇建設委員會嘅。咁當時時咧，其實佢係一個嘅，你可以講係一個半私人機構咁樣樣嘅嘅運作啊。咁嗰陣時佢係負責咩嘢咧？就係、是、負責做一啲叫做廉租屋嘅嘅樓咧。咁咧就其實咧就係我嚟幫助一啲係居住環境唔係幾好嘅，但係咧就係唔係最窮嗰班嚟嘅。咁佢個收入咧可能係有四百蚊到九百蚊工資誒水平啦咁樣。例如北角村啊、彩虹啊、蘇屋啊、誒、呃、華富啊、愛民啊，嗰啲都係屬於呢一種嘅即係廉租屋咯。In the early days, low-cost housing estates were designed by private architectural firms. It was not until the housing authority set up its own department that it began to design their own housing estates. The former director of housing, Mr. Liao Pun Huai. Was the department's first appointed architect. In 1960, Lau designed his first estate, the Ma Tao Wai Estate. This one is the building department's architectural firm. It was set up in 1950. The Ma Tao Wai Estate was the first building department's architectural firm. It was set up in 1950. 就頭一個，即係我自己有有參與嘅。馬頭喺村有二千幾個單位，諗都諗唔到啊！你三十歲個後生仔點有咁嘅機會做呢啲？咁變做設計咧，唔就唔係話設計間一棟靚嘅屋，而係成個社區咁樣。居住環境我覺得好重要。咁好彩喺馬頭圍村咧，我哋去嗰陣時咧，佢有好多啲戰前種喺度啲樹木喺度啊！成個環境靚啦，啲樹蔭喺啲細路玩咧，係啊，啲老人家真係舒服好多啊！呢啲係保留嘅啊，呢啲保留都。廖博士種嘅新樹咧，我哋睇翻啲舊相咧，細細棵，而家咧已經係綠樹成蔭啦。我第一件事接手碼頭係咧，睇下啲啲啲啲建造商有冇有冇拆爛咗我嗰啲樹啊？係。咁我就帶我個助手去到，咁每一棵樹都要 mark 住嘅。係。成棵成個 plan 喺度，每棵樹點都唔準點啊嘛。In the early 1950s, the government launched the resettlement program. Ten years later, half a million people had moved into resettlement blocks. 
But at the same time, more than 600,000 people were still living in shanty houses. The government realized that the squatter problem had not been eradicated by the resettlement program. Adding to that, Hong Kong's industrial development was taking off. People's incomes were becoming more stable and demanded a better quality of life. In response, the government published a white paper in 1964 titled Review of Policies for Squatter Control, Resettlement and Government Low-Cost Housing. This sped up the construction of resettlement areas and low-cost housing. Resettlement areas were constructed on a larger scale with even taller buildings to meet the huge housing demand. The design of the estates also placed a greater emphasis on privacy and facilities for the tenants. Apart from a balcony which doubled as a kitchen, each household had its own plumbing and toilet. Also, the eligibility criteria for living in these estates had also been relaxed, with priority for resettlement given to residents of unsafe buildings or people affected by urban renewal. In addition, temporary housing areas were introduced where homeless people were allowed to set up temporary accommodation, which later evolved into resite areas. Tinjoi, Gordon 